Hello everyone and welcome to one of the long-awaited podcasts in which we will be discussing the chosen updates and of course some frequently asked questions. Today with me are David Grasha, David Delsray and Mark Gilbert and we'll go through the questions together. So without further ado, hello guys and welcome to the chosen podcast. Hey, Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks yeah for happy to be here. Happy to share this information with the community finally. I know that there is a lot of anticipation for this information. We've been thinking about this stuff really hard, trying to square a lot of circles with this, but uh, I think we've got to a really good place. So very happy to share this information with everybody. Great. I'm really looking forward to it. Okay, cool. Before we start diving into the deep details of what the game is going to be with the Chosens in it, out of curiosity, I'd like to ask you about your favorite Chosen and why it is your favorite. Who wants to go first? <laughs> uh, <laughs> personal favorite? I just like the styling. Uh, the K47. K47, oh. the Ronin. Yeah, it's nice. cool. I'm, I'm really looking forward to finding some cool stuff to do with this guy. But, uh, you know, this is in an era that we're starting in a very early era, obviously. And so we're, you know, we're planning the game to move into different eras, move into the future. And I think there's going to be a lot of cool gameplay opportunities. I'm hoping there will be some, you know, some unique kind of functionality for maybe this specific type chosen. Uh, but, uh, cool. yeah, just cool. Just looks cool, man. It is definitely cool. Ronin. Okay, cool. That's one of the rare ones, too. <laughs> Very few of them are minted. So, what about you, Mark? Um, I don't know. I kind of like a lot of them, uh, but probably Balta. Mostly, I don't know. He just looks like someone who's dependable, you know, just get stuff done. Uh, Rugged yeah. and sturdy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, yeah. Makes sense. <laughs> get stuff done. Let's see what it does in the game, then. <laughs> Right. So, what about you, David? Um, I, I like Mark said. I, I I like a lot of a lot of them, but uh, I think since they will be coming from different uh, time and have different effects, it will be a lot of fun for us to give them proper value in the game. Uh, I think I will, I would go for Suwong. Not sure if I pronounce that right, but yeah, that's the. Yeah. That's the, yeah, I would look for this one. Right, like the princess, right? The empress and the other one. <laughs> cool. Yeah, that's my Disney princess side. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. So thank you for sharing that with me. I'm curious to know about the community's favorites as well. So hopefully they can share their ideas with us in the chat. Mm. Now, okay, cool. Now, since the Chosen are in-game assets and not PFPs, uh, before I ask about the roles they play in the gameplay, I'd like to start by asking if players can actively play with their Chosen by commanding and moving them to a specific location, or if it's all automated and they can just be assigned a task. Mm. Uh, I think there is... <clears throat> Here, we'll start off with the ambiguous answers first. Uh, <laughs> right now, right now, no, you just put them on your land tile, you can assign them to stuff, right? That's that's the functionality that we've got in right now. But as we continue to work through the intricacies of the combat system, I mean, there might be, I mean, I don't know. Uh, David, Mark, and I all have differing opinions on this stuff, so... Hang on a sec. Let me mute my Slack notifications. Uh, David, and Mark, and I all have differing opinions on this stuff, and we all have kind of a different take on what would be ideal for uh, for the combat system. I tend to like. I mean, I've got an action game background, so I like actually mixing it up, moving stuff over there, activating things. Uh, you know, like there there are more. Uh, there's stronger inclination on some, you know, from some of the guys to be a little bit more maybe turn-based uh, versus action. And so I think we're looking at prototyping some of these things to really figure out what is the best fit for us. So uh, personally, I think it's cool. I, you know, and you get a chosen, you get it at the game. I want to be able to do stuff with it and being able to move it around and kind of uh, have some real-time kind of interaction with it, I think is, is, a, is a really cool feature. But... Mm -hmm there are there are a lot of moving parts here so we'll make those determinations after we do some after we do some real prototyping i think but that's one of the things that we will definitely be prototyping okay that's actually pretty nice to hear interesting so uh, and how many chosens can be used on a land like if i have five chosen can i use all of them in the same land even though they might be from the same archetype like shaman zola etc yeah, yeah, sure. I mean, uh, the, the primary constraint on the number of chosen that you're going to be able to have on your land tile is the chosen all require uh, 
uh, they require specific housing and they have I mean, they have very specific needs there's the materials that you're going to be able to give to your workers and uh but then there's a uh, there's going to be a range of things that are specifically required for the chosen. So the number of chosen that you'll be able to have on your land tile is going to be restricted by the number of houses that you can have on your land tile for the chosen. And the number of houses that you can build or just structures that you can build in general is going to be, uh, is going to be gated by the level of the town hall. Mm -hmm. So you're not, you know, you got 50 chosen. You're not going to be able to get all of those chosen in the game right away on day one. You will be able to get some of them in there, and definitely more than one. But uh, you're going to have to kind of balance that out with the other structural requirements you've got on your land tile. Now, if you add additional pieces of land, and uh, you know, and you expand your just your your overall footprint in the game, and you build up your levels, and you unlock stuff, like there is right now, there isn't a ceiling to how many you can put on there. But uh, you will be able to get a lot, and you will be able to use a lot of them effectively. Okay, so that means like at first you might be limited, but then if you have more lands, if you upgrade them, if you just expand, then you can definitely add more, uh, more uh, place for the chosen to just house them, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they gotta have some place to live, man. Yep, <laughs> they exactly. Gotta have, they gotta have a house. They gotta have equipment. If you don't have enough, you can't support them. So you gotta. You yeah. Know, so we're you know, we're not limiting it, but we are we are definitely factoring it into the progression of the game overall and the leveling of the player. Okay, that's pretty nice, pretty cool. Thanks. Before I ask the trickiest questions about the types of the Chosen, I'd like to ask about the rarity of the Chosen. For example, are there going to be common, uncommon, etc. forms of the Chosen, like the TMA skins, for example? If so, what are the requirements that are considered towards rarity? Mark, why don't you go ahead and jump in on this one? Yeah, sure. Um... So to answer your first point, yes, there will be common and common rare. There's essentially, so you've got the usual spread of rarities. Um, and the rarity itself will mostly impact two different things. One is the, the stats of the actual chosen itself. And the other one is what types and power of the, the abilities they have. So for example, you might have two chosen of different rarities that do roughly the same thing, but one of them is an epic chosen and one of them is a common chosen now the epic chosen's version of that ability would just be better it could be better in a different ways it could be has a, a higher bonus or it could be something like it affects more targets so when you have chosen who kind of fill different roles that kind of the higher rarities are the ones you want to go for if you are looking to maximize your returns or efficiency of of the area that that chosen is imp is impacting so when you say uh, like uncommon, rare, uh, like epic or something, that means you have to level them, right? Yep. Um, yes. Well, yes, okay. absolutely. Yeah, you cool. got to level them up. The okay. only ones that you don't have to level are the legendary ones, oh. which, which come, <laughs> in, which come in at max power. They come in like fully, fully kitted out. So. Yeah. This okay. nicely brings us on to the question about types. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. Right. So, uh, but I mean, uh, um, the type is actually my the question after this question that I'm going to ask. But it's, we are definitely getting, getting there. And I have All a question right. regarding leveling, which I will ask like later. So that's great. So getting back to the roles, what do they do really? What roles do chosen play, and what abilities do they have? David, you wanna you wanna tackle this yeah, one? Yeah, sure. Uh, basically, we want to have different chosen for all the kind of uh, players that we, we will have. So we want to be able to offer s meaningful chosen to that would tackle all kind of uh, tasks around the land tile, be it uh, around resource gathering, building, production, uh, combat. Uh, basically, we want to have them like patron saints of everything that can go around your land type. Mm. So uh, really each chosen will have a specific role, but we want to have chosen of all roles. Mm -hmm. I never, I never thought about it like that before, like uh, the patron saint, right? But it, there are, there is a, you know, <laughs> there are, there are patron saints for all sorts of like very specific kind of things. I think the chosen, I, I think we do have those kind of aspirations for these, like fitting them into, we find a specific kind of gameplay role, gameplay function, having a chosen that is kind of archetype that is uh, specifically targeted towards that, I think is, I think is a really cool way to go. 
That's that's pretty cool to be honest. So that's pretty awesome. So that means that they are gonna add major boosts to anything they are designed for, right? I mean, you know, yeah, the, the scale of the boosts we're gonna determine major boosts. Like, um, we're always, yeah, <laughs> we're always very focused on on keeping things balanced and, and fair, mm. and you know, we don't want things to you completely disrupt the balance of the game just because we want to make sure that you've got like all sorts of cool abilities, but we do want to provide cool stuff and we will balance out the degree to which those benefits are applied. Part of the reason we got so many different types of chosen is we don't want to force the player to play the game in one particular way. So if you want to go down one route, you want to do the gathering, you want to do production, there are chosen to support that particular way of playing. So it's about finding the chosen that are right for you. And it's our job to make sure that there is a chosen for all types of playstyles for the mm -hmm. players. Yeah. Or you can have all the chosen, and you won't have to worry about yeah. that, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's cool. So nice. Uh, now uh, it's time for the question that we've all been waiting for. So mm. yeah, everyone knows that there are gonna be more chosen in the future, beside the fact that the first mint didn't mint out. Currently, we have about 1,500-ish chosen in mm -hmm. circulation. Now, I would like to ask you about the chosen types and the plans for the future. This is one of the, this is one of the, well, there are a lot of moving parts with the chosen. There are a lot of gameplay considerations. There are economic considerations. There are investment considerations. There's very, there are very different player cohorts that we have to, you know, that we have to be looking at and uh, making sure that we don't disrupt when we create these systems. So when we think about uh do we want more chosen in the game yes we absolutely want more chosen in the game do we want to respect the investment that the people who have got in at the very beginning of you know of our development uh, do we want to respect that tremendously uh, it is it's super important to us and so what we've done is we have kind of classified the chosen or we put, we've categorized them into different groups so now we've got you know this this first this first uh, group of chosen they're all going to be legendary chosen will there be more legendary chosen in the future absolutely uh, the numbers and quantities and timing of those things are still to be determined however uh, how do we one question that we've really wrestled with is how do we introduce more chosen without really undermining the value of the investment that our you know that our community has made in us since the very beginning of our development process and so we have decided that this initial release of chosen we are going to put we're going to call this the founders collection everybody that's gotten in on the ground floor that has helped us you know fund our development and has been enthusiastically supporting our game checking out all the stuff that you know we put out social media and you know all of our community uh, these folks they're going to be founders and their chosen will be part of the founders collection and they're going to be they're going to continue to be benefits for the founders collection and there are a lot of things that we're we're thinking about uh, am i I'm, maybe i'm explaining this in the wrong way because the the gameplay functionality the gameplay functionality that legendary chosen have will be will be the same across the board however people that have gotten in on the ground floor picked up one of those first release chosen during that first mint uh they will be part of the founders collection and we are going to find a, a host of different ways that we will be able to kind of lift up the the you know the the value both like the monetary value but also kind of the value in game so you know badges you know golden text colors all sorts of things to kind of call you out as like hey i'm one of the founders i was here from the very beginning it's going to be visible when you know in the forms of communication there's going to be things that you're going to have access to and of course like the most important thing is that founders chosen collection is the only one that is going to airdrop fragments now we might have other ways of introducing fragments into the game world uh, through gameplay definitely in the future however subsequent chosen collections legendary or not are are not going to be airdropping fragments and so that's going to be a really big bonus a really big benefit that will continue in perpetuity for everybody that, that is stuck with us since the very beginning like i said we're also going to be introducing like uh, supporting mechanics to make sure that we elevate the visibility of those people uh you know like like i said the ride or die been been here with us since the beginning so <laughs> we're gonna make sure that you know that's you're gonna call it out and you're gonna join a you're gonna join a you know some communication you're gonna be talking to the people they're gonna be like oh this guy's a founder he's been here since day one he's got you know original collection chosen yep is, is there stuff that i'm forgetting mark what about max stats i think hmm? do, do, are they gonna have max stats 
Yeah. Well, that's that's something that is going to be like all legendary chosen. So we, we look at the difference between <clears throat> the different rarity tiers. Lower rarity tiers are going to have lower max stat caps. So, uh, but as you get up to uh, as you get up to your you know your epic level chosen, you're going to be able to level them up. But they're going to start at low level, and you're going to have to grind it up. Legendary mm -hmm. chosen are going to come out of the gate fully loaded, so they're not going to require any leveling. They're going to have max stats right out the gate the very beginning and that is going to be true for all legendary chosen that we produce not just the founders collection but subsequent collections that we are also producing so what we haven't talked about is the remainder of the chosen that weren't uh, minted mm -hmm. so they will not be going into the founders collection they right. will be going into future what we're dubbing the standard collection and the standard collection will hold the remaining uh, unmented chosen and any legendary chosen that we add in future so they will still have the same in-game power as the uh, founders one so in terms of gameplay effects mm -hmm. it's kind of we're talking even across the board here and again to reiterate these will not drop fragments mm -hmm. so okay what you have now what you see now that's it that's well done. you got in yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty cool but we will, we, like I said, like you know, like we were saying, uh, we're going to continue to look for opportunities where we can elevate the status of our founders. Like, mm -hmm. I think yeah, it's, cool. it's it's super important to us. And like I said, you know, we've got so much respect for everybody in our community and really sticking with us and investing, you know, investing mm -hmm. a lot in our in our development process. So it's something that we're always going to look for little opportunities to dial up the visibility of that contribution because we respect it. And while we can't just make the chosen, especially these first round of chosen, just OP coming in, just kicking <laughs> ass, like uh, we can't do that without disrupting the balance of the game. So we we won't do that because we will not disrupt the balance of the game. This is integral to the continuity of the world and you know the viability of the of the game in the long term. Uh, we do want to continue to look for ways to elevate, you know, and demonstrate our respect for the people that have supported us. That makes sense. That makes sense. So I've prepared a short TLDR uh, so I can share it with you and see if, if it's right. So and please correct me if I'm wrong. So there are going to be two different types of chosen, legendary and non-legendary, with legendary having two collections itself, founders and standard collections. So we are going to be calling the minted ones, like 1500 ones, the founders collection, which has quite a few benefits compared to the standard collection, which will include all the unminted chosen, right? So uh, the upfront benefits of the Founders Collection are that they will be the only collection that receive fragments. So there will always be about 1,500 fragments uh, entering the market through the monthly airdrops, right? And also these chosen can be made visually different, can they? So uh, I think we, you know, we can't go back and change a lot of the stuff, but one thing we can do about like the, um, you know, the, the card that you see on OpenSea, nice border a little glossy you know mm -hmm. cover to it kind of uh something that we can put across all of these so that again it pops out on the page you know as soon as you see it you know that that oh that's a that's a founder's collection chosen that's pretty cool uh, we now we may have other collections in the future uh, this is not something that we've got already in the in the can um, but it does open the door for the possibility of there being subsequent collections even amongst the legendary chosen but uh the founders collection will stand you know, okay. individually. That's pretty cool. So that means that they will, they can be made visually different from the other ones. So, but it's a work in the future. So it's not like that. We're going to do it tomorrow. <laughs> right. Uh, right. Right. This is, this is <laughs> one of the things that we've got on the laundry list of items that we want to make sure to incorporate, to elevate the visibility of That's... the founders. That's nice. So aside from that, you said that there will be different a difference in chat designs and name badges in the game for the uh, founders, founders holders, and yeah. of course future benefits like and events exclusive to the founders collection, like for example the token air drop that we mentioned in the uh, roadmap. So mm -hmm. assuming that's gonna that's something as well. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, the the, the uh, you know dropping fragments. I mean, that's not a small deal. Yeah, <laughs> that's a pretty, of course. That's a pretty big deal, and it should be. <laughs> you know, and I'm I'm really hoping that it's like a profitable deal for everybody that got in with us at the very beginning. So mm -hmm. uh, something that kind of you know adds value to their investment. Uh, but it's not something we can do for everybody. Oh, we yeah. do want to have fragments in gameplay that are earned through gameplay, but uh, we are going to be controlling these faucets mm -hmm. you know uh, very 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 strictly men so yep yeah that make, because that makes the sense. is a big bonus 
that that makes sense actually that exactly makes sense so this was the founders collection and the standard collection on the other hand will be considered legendary but the only thing they have in common with the founders one is that they have max stats right well, I, they share a lot. They'll share a lot of characteristics. I mean, they're still going to be. You're still going to see Suong and both there. Yeah, yeah, you know, exactly. Seven Maryland. However, uh, you know, it's not like that. It's not like that glossy term. You know, Charizard mm -hmm. card. Like you know, it's like <laughs> we want to have that that same sort of like, oh, look at this one, and it's something that it's an effect that we can easily apply over all of mm -hmm. these things. Yeah, I meant in, in game power wise. So in, uh, when I compare founders and the standard collection, they have the in game power the same, right? But the founders won't have like more benefits of fragments and stuff that comes with it. Mm -hmm. But legendaries don't, the, the other ones don't get it. They have standard collection. And we'd want those, I think we'd want those chosen, like those specific chosen to be, you know, we're looking at things like uh, when you see them in game, say, you know, down the road and you or you encounter somebody else on a land tile out in the wildlands, you know, and you're looking at their, you're looking at their, their structures and their, you know, mm -hmm. and they're chosen definitely, you know, maybe tap on them. You're going to see that. Oh, boy, this is, a, this is an old school. This is an original, you know, original OG chosen. That's so nice. Maybe you know, like I said, gold text, little badge next to it, but also something that goes along with with uh, the the holder's name. Oh, that's gonna be fun, to be honest. <laughs> Flexing stuff. Okay. Yeah. So okay, I will have some questions regarding non-legendary chosen, but I will get to them like in a bit. But first, I want to ask you, uh, since we're going to have a, we're, we're definitely going to have a dedicated podcast for fragments in which we will delve into the details of why frags are gonna make a difference in the gameplay. But with them being one major, uh, one major benefit of the founders collection, I'd like to ask you if they can still be farmed in the game and how easy, difficult, or even time-consuming that's gonna be. Mark, you want to field this one? Yeah. So, okay. again, as as always, these plans are <clears throat> subject to change. But the current plans are to put the fragments at the end of the game. What we mean by that is they're not something you can just get day one. They will take significant investment, both permanent and temporary investment. And what we mean by that is you're going to need to have your land leveled up. You're going to need to have the power. You're going to have to put a lot of time and investment into your land to be able to even access the area that these fragments are. Mm. And once you've been, gained access, the actual fragments themselves will require investment to just be able to get hold of them. Now, what we can mean by that, for example, is the fragments aren't going to be on your land. You're going to have to go out and get them, which means you're going to have to uh, send your you know, potential troops out, which means they're going to need food, they're going to need supplies, they're going to need everything you need to actually get to the location that they are. Get then, once you're at there, then you're going to have to get hold of fragments, which will be slow. There will be risk to it. And then once you've got them, you've got to get them back to your, to your land as well. So getting hold of fragments will not be an easy thing. So those of you who do have access to fragments day one are going to have to be able to get the benefits of yeah. the fragments and what those fragments use from day one. But over time, because of, as the kind of player base increases and levels up, the amount of players who will be able to access these, we, these fragments will increase. But mm -hmm. we will make sure that we keep a very close eye on these. So they're not going to become uh, essentially flooded the market with these things. Mm -hmm. We yeah. want to make sure that, that um, the fragments always remain a, a difficult to get hold of uh, item and something that you know, takes significant effort to get hold of. Interesting. So but by then, uh, a lot of the fragments that are in the market might be burnt, <laughs> right? Might be used. Entirely possible. <clears throat> I mean, there's a there are a fair number of fragments out there right mm -hmm. now. But if you want to if you want to make crystals out of these, you want to combine them into refined crystals. I mean, it's you know you're gonna have to burn quite a few of them, and there is still going to be some some RNG involved there, and like what the output is. So, uh, yeah, the, there's there are going to be advantages right up front if you've got them. There's going right. to be a path for uh, through gameplay to grind for them, but it is going to be a grind. And like like Mark said, you're going to have to be you're going to have to be quite developed in order to be able to access the areas of the world where these these fragments of ever are are scattered. And so, uh, if you don't if you don't have them right out of the gate, you know you can buy them off of somebody that does have them, or you can grind your way to get them. That's pretty nice. Thank you for sharing that with me. So, uh, Mark, you said since, something about stats that I wanted to ask you now. Uh, how does leveling the Chosen work? Like, how is the Chosen power tied to it? So, when you get any non-legendary Chosen, they all start at level 1. 
and you need to be able to level that chosen up. Uh, leveling the chosen is done mainly in two ways. One is just using the chosen. So wherever that chosen is meant to be, it, it could be in like a gathering building or a production building, just being in that building and providing that bonus will slowly give the chosen experience over time. So we want to make sure that, you know, you, they get experience for what they're meant to be used for. Uh, and the second thing is experience items. There will be items that you will be able to obtain by through gameplay as rewards or uh, from other players purchasing or uh, events, things like that. You will be able to apply to the Chosen, which gives them essentially an, a nice little boost of experience. Mm -hmm. However, leveling is limited. So you are allowed to level a Chosen up to a certain level, after which point you need to promote them. And the promoting it requires resources and these resources are tied to the actual chosen themselves in that you need to use chosen as and when specifically here non-legendary chosen here <laughs> we need to use those as resources to promote them it's a similar system that's been used in uh, in many games before but essentially the chosen that you don't want can be used to fuel and power up the ones you do want um and as you go higher and higher, the costs are getting more increased, but also that unlocks higher levels. Uh, and as the, the chosen increase, it also starts unlocking their abilities. So again, when they first first to get them, they'll have a, a very weak version of the ability, if any ability at all. Then you level them up, they start unlocking the abilities, and you can start powering those abilities up as well. So there's a lot of both time investment in terms of getting the experience and also uh, resource investment in, it, in bypassing these promotion barriers that uh, to kind of get the chosen up to their maximum level. Uh, mm -hmm. As a comparator, uh, we, when a an epic chosen is at maximum level and maximum power, i.e. You, you fully sunk everything into it, you fully upgraded all their abilities, they will be roughly comparable to a legendary chosen. So mm -hmm. that is, I, I'm mentioning this to kind of give you a, an idea of the routes that a player has through the game is if they want to just play through gameplay, they can. They can kind of get to a legendary chosen equivalent through only gameplay, but it's going to be a lot of work and it's going to be a slog and it's going to take a lot of time. So again, right out of get back, you know, out of the gate, day one, those legendary guys are going to be just uh, kind of operating at full power. However, we do want legendary to kind of be this uh, target almost for for players to own, which is part of the reason for us creating that standard collection. We want to make sure that a, a legendary chosen is still an attainable target for for an average player, um, and it should be one of those badges. It's like, hey, cool, you know, I finally got my legendary chosen. Awesome, you know, I really wanted. Yeah, I want. I, I want Bolter. There we go. Uh, I really wanted a Bolter because I really want him to to be in this particular building because it supports the way I want to play. And you know, that can be one of the things you you, you as a player aim for. But in the side, you've also got your your legend, your rare, kind of high rarity ones. You've got your epics, you've got your rares, your uncommon chosen going up as well. Mm -hmm. Because, okay, as David said earlier, you're going to, as you level your land up, you're going to unlock more opportunities to use the chosen as well. Okay, that's pretty cool. So uh, you already answered two of my questions. So just to be clear, that so uh, the legendary chosen is going to have full power right at the beginning, but a non-legendary chosen, uh, you have to upgrade them. You have to work on them. But the highest it can go is is it epic or legendary? No, no. So an epic. Um, okay. They, they they never change rarities. So again, let, sorry. Let me let me reiterate. A <laughs> chosen will never change rarities. The <laughs> only thing they do is they get promoted, which will be displayed uh, through the game, um, and they'll have a level. So mm -hmm. if you get a rare chosen, even if it's at maximum power and you've leveled it up and promoted it, it will still always be listed as rare. You will still okay. always see it as rare. It will never become an epic. It will never become a legendary. Mm -hmm. So rarities never change. And the associated power levels, right? So a rare's max power level is never, it's not going to quite reach that of an epic. Uh, epic is going to be just shy maybe of legendary or almost equivalent uh but you're gonna you're gonna start from the ground floor and have to level it all the way up but if you want to level up an uncommon chosen you absolutely can um the the the, the cap the skill cap, i mean the the stat cap is going to be is going to be a bit lower so mm -hmm. there's incentive to you you know to upgrade yeah so uh uncommons Getting an uncommon to maximum level and maximum power will be much quicker than an epic one. It will take less resources. It will be quicker. But 
the, the, the relative power of those two things is different. So yeah, you can have a quick win by grabbing one of those uncommon chosen and powering them up and get those bonuses nice and early. But over mm -hmm. time, as you're improving your land and you're gaining more bonuses, you're going to start wanting to swap these things out. So you know what? There's two chosen that really boost my lumber mill. Okay. And one of them is an uncommon, one of them is an epic. Well, what mm -hmm. I'm going to do is I'm going to grab that, that uncommon guy. I'm going to level him up. I'm going to stick him in there to get those bonuses now. But in the background, I'm going to work on this, this epic guy. And at some point, the epic's bonus is going to climb and higher than the uncommons. And at that point, I switch them out because now my epic guy is, is, is giving me more of a bonus. But yeah, it's, okay. again, it's going to take me longer. It's going to take me more resources to get to that point. So mm -hmm. the, the different rarities I've chosen uh, have different uses throughout the game. We don't want a chosen to ever become useless uh, or, you know, you know, you've got this thing in there. There is literally no use for it. Every chosen will have a purpose for using it. However, the uses for them vary at your progression through the game. And and they're also going to be introduced in subsequent eras. Right? You know, I don't expect that uh, K forty seven or Maryland are going to be as applicable to your Neolithic kind of environment at the outset of the game. They're still going to have utility, definitely. They're still going to improve it. You assign you assign them to anything, they're going to add value to that. However, uh, as we as the game progresses uh, down the timeline. We are going to be finding new opportunities as we introduce new resources and new technology. We're going to be able to find new opportunities to uh, capitalize upon some of those more specific chosen that come from a later period. Okay, so that makes so that what you what you mean that is, for example, if I have uh, Marilyn, I can use it right now whenever the game launches. But then yeah. in the future, when there's uh, let's say developed technology. Merlin mm -hmm. will actually have a purpose, like fully functional purpose that actually adds major, like, like. Well, you're right. It's just a hacker, right? And so yeah, gotta oh, be, of course. Gotta be computer track. <laughs> yeah, once we start, once we get into, you know, enter a computer age, mm -hmm. the, you know, this, this hacking discipline is going to have to have some it's gonna be fun. specific utility. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> That's going to be fun. <laughs> okay. So thanks for sharing that with me. Uh, now that we talked about the non-legendary, like, how does one get a non-legendary or off-chain chosen? How do you get it? Like, do you mint it? Do you buy it? Do you uh, call it? <laughs> yeah. So, at the moment, uh, we are still looking into the the exact methods. Um, however, in, in general, we're it's probably going to be a process similar to uh, like a summoning process. Yeah. And this will be uh, rare in that it's not going to be something you're going to do a lot of it because in the end, chosen are special. So getting hold of them is going to be a, a relatively slow process but the rarity of the chosen will also impact the difficulty of getting hold of it so mm -hmm. there will be different methods but essentially at the moment we're looking into a summoning uh, summoning route so right. you get one of the hold of one of these resources you use it at the end of it it goes hey congratulations you got an uncommon congratulations you got an epic um and the rarities of these things will be um will, will make a big or sorry will affect the actual chances these chances will be like player facing you'll be able to see what it is you'll be able to see what the chances are to get it this isn't something we're trying to hide um but we want to make sure that the the epics are suitably hard to get to make sure that they retain their value yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think yeah. it's, it's important to think about, like, I mean, they're called chosen for a reason, and that's because they've been pulled from, you know, they've been pulled from across time and space. They've been chosen specifically to come to this planet to, to you know, well, I don't want to get too into this stuff because <laughs> we haven't released a lot of this information yet, but, uh, okay. <laughs> but the, the, they're, they're called chosen for a reason. And so, you know, there's going to be a little bit of, there's going to be some mystic kind of stuff going on here portals summoning things you know oh. they're pulled across time and space and so you'll be able to you know you'll be able to access you know, an uncommon ep a rare mm -hmm. and epic summon a legendary summon so okay. since you said like uh about the summoning and okay so people can't summon it so that means that they cannot summon every time they want they have to wait or do some process to be able to get to the point of summoning there's something. always a process yeah man. there's always there's a process, always a process. <laughs> yep but so what about the what about the requirements and the materials do they have to have materials for it like are you were talking about the summoning here we just yeah the, 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 the summoning no no the summoning like if i want to summon something do i have to just wait until a period of time to summon something or do i have to actually grind material and then use that material for the summoning button to 
like pop up, for example? It will be a particular item, um, and there will be multiple methods. So, uh, if you say, okay, there's just a regular scroll. Let's again na names to be decided and, and worked out here, but let's just call it a scroll for now. So, you've got like a regular scroll that has a chance of pulling um, commons, uncommons, rare, chosen, and very low chance of an epic. We might have mm -hmm. a better scroll which can go. Okay, we know that doesn't isn't going to give you common chosen, but it might be uncommon rares and epics with a slightly higher chance of getting epic. Then we might have you know uh, a, a, a mystic or an epic scroll or whatever you know. And it could that be that they have a, 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 a chance of right. only rares and, and epic chosen, for example. Mm -hmm. So the items themselves will be consumed in the process, and you would get a chosen uh, as part of that process. It would have like a like almost like a recipe, wouldn't it? I mean, I know this is very much this is squarely like the economy balancing all of the ways that we structure these things are very central to the economy. So I mean, we count on Mark a lot to tell us like, okay, no, this is the this is the right way to handle this. But I, you know, I've always envisioned a. a lists of you know like recipe requirements you're gonna need three of this six of this and one of these in order to activate this scroll mm -hmm. right now that's just you know again we were just kind of you know throwing out hypothetical terms right now but uh mm -hmm. would you say that's accurate mark uh, yes and no in that the the scrolls themselves still have to be obtained so mm -hmm. you will need to use the scrolls alongside other things so yes the other things you need to use alongside them you'll have as part of a recipe but the scroll itself um you will still have to obtain it uh mm -hmm. some of them you'll be able to get through gameplay uh, events are definitely a major uh thing we're look leaning towards as a source of these so you know uh the events themselves uh will be th like scattered around the world you'll need to go over you need to do this you need to be able to make sure you you really play a part in it and the scrolls can be uh, you get a chance to getting these things the more difficult the event is, the higher chance you get it, and maybe you can get one of the better types of scrolls. But alongside that, yes, there will be there will be a cost alongside the scroll to actually obtain these things. Again, we want these things to be to be valuable. So it's not a case of I'm going to get loads of these things day one, and I'm just going to fire out, you know, some of these things. I'm going to get loads of chosen. No, it's mm -hmm. it's it's a gradual process over time, and we we want them to support your land as you go. I mean, we, we kind of touched on this earlier. When you first start, you're not going to have a lot of buildings. You're going to have a very basic land. But as you increase it, as you add more buildings, more types of buildings, more advanced buildings, the slots for chosen will start to open up. And then alongside that, your ability to get the chosen will start to open up as well. So we will be introducing them at the point you can start to use them. Because mm -hmm. it, it's part of the onboarding. We, we still need to teach the players how to play the game and where to use the chosen and how they're best suited. So we don't want to kind of flood the player with all of these kinds of things right out of the right of the, bed, the kind of door. Okay, that that's really nice and seems pretty hard. People people have to really play hard and really uh, put their backs to it to get to the point to summon the chosen. <laughs> okay, that's that's fun actually. But what if like someone got the chosen and they don't want it? Like I got it chosen, I summoned it, but I don't want it. Well, so there are two things. First of all, uh, I mentioned earlier in in to power up a chosen, you need to uh, use other chosen as part of it. Uh, David mentioned you'd be sending them home, and as part of that, you get a resource. That resource is used in the promotion process. So mm -hmm. you will there will be quite a few chosen you you get over time that you either don't want or you specifically want them for the, the resource that they give you. So uh, and it will be. Um, imbalanced in that one cho to get one chosen to maximum power will take quite a few others um, to actually get them there. So that's the first option is, is use it in promoting up a chosen that you do want. The second way is sell it. We have a market in yeah. the game. You'll be able to put it on the market and sell it to someone who does want it. There you go. Okay. Yeah. Very nice. That's the best use of marketplace. <laughs> right? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> cool. Nice. Thanks for sharing the, all this information with me. That's that's why I'm I'm saying every time, like guys, this like, the economy and the gameplay of Civitas is pretty complex and sophisticated. So, oh man, <laughs> that's, a, that's a colossal <laughs> understatement. You know, it's like I mean, David, David's got his head in systems. Mark's got his head in the economy, right? I mean, I'm trying to look at like how like the how everything works together collectively, but we're constantly having dialogue that goes back and forth and be like, okay, I'm taking this, and you're like, oh, but you got to think about this, and oh, that's going to affect these systems and it's a uh, it's a constant dialogue between the three of us, so we're find, we're trying to find the most elegant solutions that satisfy all these disparate requirements harmoniously. 
And yes. so uh, it's it is it is complicated, and yeah. everything has economic repercussions. And we've got such like uh, such a high degree of systemic complexity that you know there's so many moving parts that yeah, finding that elegant solution is sometimes it's real trial, and it takes a long process for us to work through the problem till we find like I think. I know I think there's a quote is like, you know, the strategy, great strategy is always simple, but it's never easy. And uh, this, uh, this absolutely applies to this situation. It's like we want to find these simple, elegant solutions, but the path to designing those and really recognizing what they are is is rarely just a like, oh, it's this. Oh, it's this. It's not it's not the first <laughs> thing you think it's going to be, you know. I mean, we've had conversations with you about this, right? You know, in the community, you're always giving us good information about, you know, community perspective, investor perspectives, like making sure that we pay attention to these things. A lot of this information, it changes the changes our approach to it, which is why nice. we spent so much time developing the, you know, the functionality of the chosen. I and mean, there's so many, there's so many, it touches so many different game systems and, and it exists outside of the game as well for people that even might not be potentially playing the game as extensively as, as some of our, or some of our more hardcore dedicated, you know, gaming audience. And so making sure that it satisfies all of the hopes and expectations, you know, for each of those cohorts is that's pretty it's tremendously cool. important it makes it makes it super complicated man the, <laughs> yeah it, 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 yeah i mean it it sounds like pretty complicated and it definitely it is now that you mentioned well, all this information it's actually intricate. very it's intricate. yeah <laughs> yeah i mean the, to the community we always listen to you of course you always share your opinions and we listen to you if it's something we can't do about it we will do something about it <laughs> right <laughs> Yeah, definitely. Okay. That's pretty cool. So uh, getting back to the chosen, one frequently asked question is about the huddler and architect traits uh, where we will be giving those chosens with these specific properties a limited mm -hmm. edition building based on the trait. So having said that, if one's mm -hmm. chosen has a huddler or architect in their property, uh, they can claim the building on their land whenever the game goes live. But the question is, uh, what kind of buildings are these and if they're going to have a function or if they are just aesthetics? Well, it's difficult to give them functionality that is unique in the game without disrupting the balance of the game. So I don't know that we are going to be able to really dial up any specific functionality. It is largely there might be there might be something, but again, like we're we're super conscientious of how things affect the balance of the game, and we don't want mm -hmm. to make something like super scarce and at the same time super valuable. And it's like oh, but I can't ever get to it. So um, will it be? Will it be something visually distinct? Absolutely. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, would, could it have maybe some bonus effects? Uh, that would be, I think that would be ideal, but at the same time, like we're going to be very careful not to disrupt mm -hmm. the balance of the game. Uh, do we want it to have, I think, you know, we want it to be, we want it to be definitely ornamental and step pop on your land tile and be like oh he's got one of those. Like, yeah, uh, I want it. <laughs> it. Yes, and, but but I think that's I think that's that is the the scope that we're looking for at this right now. I, again, like we want to honor and respect these things, and we want to elevate like the, the visibility of the people that hold them. So if there if there are ways to increase that, and you know, mm -hmm. we, we we want to find those solutions. But I, I can say that it is not going to be a uniquely functional building that only the people that have this trait will be able to get because that that's kind of that's that's a bit game breaking. So yeah, that breaks the economy. It'll be, it'll be visual, <laughs> and you know, you'll be able to spot it on somebody's land tile, and you go, "Oh, they yeah. got that trait." Mm -hmm. yeah. So those who have the trait will be able to flex and brag, and of course, like having a limited yeah. edition building in your asset means that that asset would be super right. collectible, right? <laughs> yes, absolutely. So yeah. now let's say the player uh, claims it, claims this trait, and receives the building. Does this building mm -hmm. get fused in the land, or can the player take it with themselves when moving to a different land? You'd be able to take it with you, right? It's like once you once you unlock it, once you get it, it's done. Like there isn't going to be. I then I then sell my mm -hmm. uh, my chosen to somebody else. Are they going to be able to unlock the building? No, they're not. Oh, going okay. To be able to. So it'll be a, it'll be a one time thing. You get it, you unlock it, you plunk it on your land tile. There you go. Mm -hmm. You want to pick it up? You want to move it to another land tile that you own? There will be uh, there will be an infrastructure that supports that. Um, could you sell it? I mean. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, um, but that's where it ends. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that means like the the building will stay on the land. So if you share your land with that building inside it, it's gone, right? 
it's kind of an edge case. Uh, I don't know that we have like a definitive answer to mm-hmm. yet, uh, because because that ties into then like. I mean, the improvement of land and the selling of land and how are we going to sell land and are you going to be able to sell land fully mm-hmm. loaded versus, uh, you know, are you going to take all your buildings off of it? Okay. Um, so uh, it ties into that. And while we have, I think, a pretty clear direction in mind for it, uh, there's still a lot of there's still a lot of tests and future proofing to run it through before mm-hmm. we can say for certain. Makes sense. So it's, it's on the list. So that's actually nice. Cool. Yeah. So uh, yeah, yeah, I think we have like about 300-ish architect and hodler trades combined, if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. So they are pretty limited in quantity all on their own. Yeah. It's cool. And my last question is about the elements that we see under properties of a chosen. Is that going to play a role in the game or is it just aesthetics as well? Mark, why don't you go ahead with this one? Um, at the moment, uh, we're leaning towards a mostly being aesthetic. Um, mm-hmm. because we don't want these things to be, uh, again, similar to the reason for the huddlers, and we, we don't want these things to be hugely impactful mm-hmm. um, and, and unique and only ways to get these things. Um, so at the moment, we're just leaning towards it being uh, an aesthetic bonus um, mm-hmm. for the Chosen, but this is one of those things that as we start to flesh out the uh, potential of the other collections um, and what a lot of these other legendary chosen things will do in future we'll be revisiting these ones because we would rather say it's aesthetic for now and you know it you know that's what it is and then go oh actually you know what we've been able to find a really cool use for it and then add that in later then say right out the gate yeah we're going to give you something only to turn around and say yeah, actually turns out you know it was it was too <clears> too <throat> strong so for most of these sorts of these these elements or characteristics we want to make sure that they fit in the game that they are uh, aesthetic mostly first and mm. uh, they give you something to show off something to boast again that is a lot of what the founder chosen are about it's yeah. about you know having that really cool thing that no one else has it's showing that you were there for the start yeah exactly yeah. Brag as much as um, possible <laughs> the aesthetics, well, now when we say it's just aesthetics it's not you know it's not a minor thing we're not looking to go at ah, you know some small tiny thing over in the corner you can't really see no if we're going to we always want to make sure that these things pop. However they're going to have, they're going to be obvious. You're going to be able to see it, um, mm-hmm. be it on a land, be it on the chosen. Yeah, what, however we, we kind of visualize things, it's going to be obvious. Um, but at the moment, the elements, yeah, sim- uh, similar to the, the buildings, they will be visual only. Okay, that's, before, that's fine. Before we, before we end this, I, I just wanted to say that, you know, in terms of like game design philosophy, uh, I think our approach with a lot of these things is that there isn't going to be any one piece of the game that is going to have stats or value that is by itself uniquely like going to give you an advantage, right? The, the, the thing that we want is we want, we want players to, we want players to, consider all of the moving parts right and you're uh, constantly trying to apply these small statistical advantages to have like a, a net positive that is very strong so um you know it's like you've got to you got to consider all the moving pieces and then you kind of okay well if i level this up you know and if i add this and i dial this up then it's going to give me an overall very advantageous uh i don't know Production rate, like a uh, harvesting rate, uh, combat skill. Like, there's, there's a, but again, none of these things is going to be. I just need this single piece to, you know, to grease the path to success on this. It's going to, it's going to be a combinatorial approach to mm-hmm. all of these things. So no one piece, no, be it chosen, be it a piece of equipment, be it you know structure on your land is going to give you by itself. Uh, a huge advantage however in combination with several other pieces that you have also spent a lot of time grinding up and leveling and you know building or researching it's like uh, collectively like that's going to be the real path to success that's going to be fun uh, since since you spent uh, since you said attack and i just want to say when when attack when combat when combat system <laughs> still, it's, still right? it's gonna be fun <laughs> it's it's you know it's such a it, we are all very enthusiastic about it. We all we have very differing opinions on the on the right kind of 
path with it. And the only way that we're going to be able to really choose the right path for us is, is through an extensive prototyping test, a uh, prototyping period where we test each of these options. We kind of identify the things that are the pros and the cons, you know, and one might be, we might lean in direction, pull some things from another direction, but, uh, you know, real time turn based action input you know is it all like you know, auto resolve uh, these things are all like uh, you know these are all important potential components and so you know it's it's not as soon as we would like but that's <laughs> because we're taking the time yeah. to do it right because uh i think this is going to be a real it's going it's to be a real engaging component of the game and yep. it's going to give people an opportunity to really like see how how powerful they are how much you know like to recognize realize the fruits of their labor so we really want it to be that uh, you know an exciting and, and compelling uh, gameplay loop i agree so we're gonna build a world and we're gonna go to the moon so why not Let's go to the moon <laughs> right <laughs> up at the moon yeah exactly there's one more thing that we were talking about specifically that we didn't address which was uh equipment right uh, there's, oh. uh, there's yeah there's some specific aspects so david did you want to talk about this a little bit i think there's some specific components of like you know chosen equipment and features and things that we're, we're tapping onto them to actually increase their levels because maybe i don't know why don't you mm -hmm. Uh, of yeah. course, of course, if there's a little bit, yeah, yeah. So, mm -hmm. so basically, it's uh, when we said that the the chosen will have needs, they will need houses, they will need food, they will need such and such. Uh, we also wanted to have a notion for the player to personalize, customize a bit the way their uh, chosen function by giving them specific equipment. Like, for example, oh, I have this uh, chosen that is very good at, uh, that is is boosting my uh, lumber, lumberjack camp. Well, I can attribute it an axe that will make it uh, gather more wood per collection. Mm -hmm. Or I can give it another kind of tool that will make it so that the the collection will be faster. So... In that way, each player will be able to find around uh, what be what children works best for them and also give them a, a bit more customization. So they will not be necessary equipment. Like you can have a, a lot of uh, chosen without having them equipping anything, but they will be interesting fine tuning tools for, for them. Mm. So that's yeah, that's the idea. That's a lot of customization to it, right? I mean, you know, you can just have the chosen, I guess, raw, I guess, unequipped, like uh, you know, and assigned to a specific function, specific structure. But if you really want to maximize the amount of output that they're, and we always we always come back to the the lumber camp, like when we're talking about stuff, because it's the easiest example. Right? <laughs> it applies to all the different types of structures that we've got. You want to maximize those things. You want to go in. We're going to give you the the tools and the opportunity to really uh, break down each each structure, each you know character that you've got each chosen that you've got assigned or each worker that you've got assigned the equipment that they've got like uh, their comfort level at their house uh, there's all sorts of things that are going to if you can dial up all of these things it's really going to maximize your output it's gonna it's going to accelerate your grind even potentially be you know lead to uh you know profitability is uh, entirely possible like just depending upon like how considerate you are of these systems so it's got a pretty good uh, intricate infrastructure for it but you know there is a cap for their abilities but you can supercharge them by finding building you know manufacturing like quality equipment okay a little so, bit of, little so bit of magic sauce interesting so you can do it for all the chosen so even if you have a legendary you can you have to still like build a house give it equipment to actually yeah. like give it even more power than yeah, yeah, the power it doesn't just sit out on the stoop, okay. <laughs> and uh, you know, it's that like, is. Okay, you, can't have a house, you can return yeah. to. Right? You want to, you can assign. Uh, the one thing that we didn't really talk about in too much detail is the difference between assigning a chosen to the town hall versus assigning a chosen to an individual structure. But there's going to be specific functionality based on the type of structure that you assign your chosen to, and then their specific skill set is going to complement that structure uh, to a varying degree. 
And if you get yeah. all of those things in alignment, you can really you can really optimize your output. The complexity of it is awesome. Mm. It's nuanced. It's nuanced. Okay. Yeah. Cool. That's that's awesome. So right. I, I will definitely share this with the community and see to it if to see if they have any questions. I will forward them to you. And okay. if there's is there anything else you would like to add before we wrap this up? Um, yeah, I just like to I just like to say you know to everyone that's checking out our podcast, we really appreciate and respect you guys for coming on this journey with us. We're really excited to because we we I mean you know we spent we spent a lot of time entrenched finding solutions and you know and engaging kind of uh, pathways forward with these things, and so we're really excited to share them with you. Uh, Arush is is fantastic at communicating the feedback from the community to us, keeping us informed on on how things You're go so down kind. with everybody. <laughs> and so you know, don't uh, don't hesitate. Like you know, let us know what you think. Let us know the kinds of things you're thinking about and share that stuff with us. It's helpful. And, you know, and like I said, we're all in this journey together. And so, uh, you know, the, the, the feedback from this stuff is absolutely valuable and uh, we're really excited to share it with you. And I hope you guys appreciate it. Thank you, David. That was so kind. <laughs> okay. And thank you, man. I appreciate that. Okay. <laughs> awesome. So I thank you and thank the community for listening to us. And as always, and as a disclaimer, Anything that's been said can always be subject to change should there be a need. And yeah, exactly. Important. Uh, it's an important disclaimer. Yeah, exactly. That's a disclaimer that we have to share un un until the game is out, like everyone yeah. can uh, play it. And if you have any questions, you can always ping me in the Discord. And I wish you all a great day. All right. Cheers, everyone. Thanks so much. Thanks, well, David. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Bye.